Hello everyone. Okay, in section 3.3, I'm not gonna go in detail or show the proof, but what if the relationship is not linear, but you have u is a function of x. For example, u could be 2x squared. Now that's not a linear, like 2x, 5x, 7x, not a linear, not just a simple amplification. You square x, you take the natural log of x, or maybe the exponential of x. So now this is a function of x. And I want to know what is the uncertainty in this function. Or if I call it u, then what is the uncertainty in u? And a good approximation is you take the derivative of u with respect to x and evaluate this u at the location of the measurement. So let's say you are making a measurement here, x, and now this is f of x, or what we call u. And you made a measurement x here. Let's say it's x1. So you take the derivative of this one, which is the slope, and you evaluate it at that location. So you evaluate this derivative at that location, time the standard deviation of x, the measurement you are making. So basically the uncertainty of the function will be the uncertainty of the measurement time the derivative of that function at the instant of measurement. So if you make this measurement, then the slope here will be smaller. So the uncertainty will be small because the data changing slowly. And that's what this equation is saying. So let's take this example. We have a sphere and we are measuring the radius of a sphere. And the radius is three and the uncertainty is 0.001. Now I want to estimate the value of the sphere. And the equation for the volume of the sphere is four over three pi r cube, the radius cube. So now I wanna estimate the volume and the uncertainty in my estimate. So to calculate the volume, it will be four over three time pi, which is 3.1414, time the radius cube, so that will be 3 to the power of 3, so the answer came 113.09. Now I need to find the uncertainty. Well, according to this equation, this is the uncertainty on the volume. So the uncertainty in the volume is the derivative of the volume with respect to the measurement parameter, which is r, so that will be 4 over 3 pi the derivative of r will be 3r squared and take the absolute value and you evaluate these at the measurement you take. That's mean at r3 time the standard deviation of x, which is in this case the standard deviation of the radius. And this will be 4 over 3 times 3.1414 times 3 time r, which is 3 squared, time the standard deviation of r, which is this one here. And this will be 0.11. Okay, so then I can estimate the volume and say the volume is 113.09 plus minus 0.11. And that's what's error propagation. We start with an uncertainty in the measurement 0 0.001. By the time we finish processing and find the volume, it's now propagated to 0.11. The last section of chapter 3 is uncertainty for a functions of several measurements. So let's assume you are taking x1 to xn measurement and they are independent and you are calculating a quantity u that is a function of this measurement. And you want to know what is the uncertainty in this quantity. An approximation for this uncertainty, it's this one, which is basically the partial derivative of the function u with the first parameter x1 then you evaluate this slope at the measured value of x1 and you square it and then time the variance of the first parameter x1 plus 
the partial derivative with respect to the second measurement or second parameter evaluated at that instance of measurement x2 time the variance of the second parameter x2 and so forth until the n measurement now let's take an example and instead of doing this example let's do another example so assume you have in the lab resistor values with uncertainty plus minus five percent of its value and you have 60 ohm and 40 ohm resistors 20 ohm and 4 ohm resistors but for your circuit design you need to design a 24 ohm resistor so you don't have the 24 ohm resistor in your lab so you have two options method one let's call it method one you have two resistors in series r1 r2 and you can choose r1 to be 20 ohm r2 4 ohm that will give you 24 ohm and here the uncertainty plus minus five percent of 20 ohm that will be one and this is the same thing uncertainty plus minus five percent of the four ohm resistor is 0.2 method two you have two resistors in parallel and let's call this r1 r2 and you choose r1 to be 60 ohm plus minus the uncertainty of a 60 ohm that is five percent which give you three and you can choose r2 to be the 40 ohm plus minus the uncertainty five percent of 40 is 2 ohm and these two in parallel will give you also 24 ohm resistor but now here i am trying to find the uncertainty let's call it r method one that's i want to know and the same thing i want to know what is the uncertainty for r method two what is it which method is better should i choose the two in, in series or the two in parallel well i will choose the one that will give me the least uncertainty in the 24 ohm resistor i will get both of them will give me 24 ohm resistor but one of them will have different uncertainty and the other one will have different uncertainty so i will choose the method that will give me the least uncertainty because any variation in the, va in the value of the resistor will affect the performance of my whole system that i'm designing so let's calculate the uncertainty for method one and let's call the resistor here r method one equal r1 plus r2 and the uncertainty because r1 and r2 are independent then the uncertainty of rt1 the first method equal the square root c1 square time the variance plus c2 square c is the constant in this case is just one time the variance of r2 and this will be the square root c1 is a constant that's here which is one and c2 is a constant that is one and the variance of r1 we said it's one ohm resistor so that will be one square plus c2 is one square that's one the variance of r2 we said 0.2 so that would be 0.2 square so the answer is the square root of 1.04 so this is 1.02 so for method one i will get the resistor will be 24 ohm plus minus 1.02 ohm okay let's calculate method two so now the method two our total and let's call it two is r1 time r2 because they are connected in parallel over r1 plus r2 so we're going to use now these equations in my case u here is r t2 so to find the standard deviation of r t2 it's the square root of the partial derivative of u with respect to x1 x1 in my case is r1 x2 is r2 so let's find the partial derivative of r2 rt2 with respect to partial derivative of r1 squared time the variance of r1 squared plus 
the partial derivative of RT2 with respect to R2 squared times the variance of R2. So let's find the partial derivative first of RT2 with respect to R1. So it's the denominator R1 plus R2. So now I'm doing the partial derivative to this function. Time the derivative of the numerator with respect to R1. So I get here R2 minus the numerator, which is R1 time R2 time the derivative of the denominator with respect to R1. So that will be just one divided by the square of the denominator. And when you simplify this, R1, R2 will cancel. So this is R2. So you will end up with R2 squared divided by R1 plus R2 squared. And if I do the partial derivative for this one, same thing with respect to R2, it will be exactly instead of R2 here, I will have R1 squared squared. So now I have to evaluate these here, partial RT2 over partial R1 for R2 40, that's the measured or the used parameter and R1 60. So this will be 40 square divided by 60 plus 40 squared. So this comes to 0.16. And same thing here, evaluate this at R1 60, R2 40, and they should get 60 squared divided by 60 plus 40 squared. And this should give me 0.36. All right, so all I did right now, I calculated this value and this value. So the standard deviation of RT2 is the square root of 0.16 squared times the variance of R1. The variance of R1 is this one here, 3. So that will be 3 squared plus this quantity is 0.36 squared times the variance of R2, which is 2 squared. And if you calculate this, you should get 0.87. And with method 2, then the total resistor will be 24 plus minus 0.87. So definitely, if I compare these two, method two has less uncertainty. It's just 0.87 versus method one, the uncertainty is 1.02. So I am better to use the parallel method to get the 24 instead of the series method. And even though intuitively we would have thought the series would be better because the standard deviation or the uncertainty here is 1.02 versus here it's 3 and 2. But the way we calculate the uncertainty, our total here is a more complex function. It's divided by R1 plus R2. So somehow they cancel this uncertainty versus this method 1, our total is just you add them up. You add the uncertainty. So sometimes just by looking at the process or the calculation, you cannot really estimate the error propagation just by looking intuitively. You have to carry the math. That end chapter three and next video we will start chapter four. Thank you.